Our subject for this brief little presentation is one that fascinates everyone. And for those who have not yet gotten into it, it's their dream and their ambition. And that is the subject of marriage. In Genesis 2 verse 18, God said, And God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now people take that to mean that God said, It is not good that people should be single. That's not what God was saying. What God was saying is, it is not good for people to be isolated, lonely, and without social support. Now, of course, Adam was the only man alive at that time. Eve came a few moments later, and God united them. So it is not good for us to be disconnected and separate and without social support. Studies have shown that people with no social support are more likely to be ill and tend to die quicker. But having said that, let me be more particular. God performed the first marriage ceremony. You may say God invented marriage and he uses marriage as a symbol of the relationship between him and the church or between Christ and the church. Marriage, biblically, first is a relationship between a man and a woman, a male and a female. We live in a world where in some countries it is legal for a man to marry a man, a woman, a woman. But God's system is a male marries a female. The other thing to keep in mind God must put them together. That should have been number one, by the way. God must put them together. And the same way God put Adam and Eve together, God can put you with the one he has chosen for you. He has not lost the ability to do that. The same way he found a bride for Isaac, he can find a man or a woman for you that matches you so that your union draws both of you closer to God than you would be in a single state or a single state. The other thing to keep in mind is God had one man, one woman, not one man, four women, uh, three or six or ten, as some religions or social groups allow. We marriage must be conducted the Bible way. First, God must put the people together. Two, male and a female. Three, one of each. And of course, I can say four, God must be in the middle, not only at the wedding, but throughout the marriage, God must be in the middle. And you must ask yourself this question in the light of First uh, uh, Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Then you must marry to the glory of God. Before marriage, you must ask the question, how will my getting married glorify God? If you cannot identify how and you call yourself a Christian, wait until you can find out or see clearly how your union with someone else will glorify God. Because on the point of marriage, you cannot be the first concern, nor the person you're considering, but God must be the first concern, always and at all times. So if you're contemplating marriage, remember, God must put you together with that person. One man, one woman, one male, one female, and God must be present not simply at the wedding, but throughout the marriage in order that that union may glorify God. May the Lord bless you as you contemplate this very, very serious step.